So I want to replace the interior on my car. The carpet is just worn out. The problem is there's nothing under $1,000 and even the products that are out there are the used original things. So I found an option on Amazon. It's $144 and I'm not intending to buy the cheapest thing. It is the only thing available. So the positive thing is, is that it is built to order and it is meant for my car. So I have really high hopes. Now, that said, I'm expecting to do some manual labor. I mean, realistically, let's be honest, it's cheap carpet. So I'm hoping with a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of manipulation, and a lot of prep work that I can make this carpet fit. One of the very interesting things about this carpet is that Mazda used to use this as a marketing ploy that the carpet itself has hollow fibers. So they were so concerned about weight that the carpet apparently is empty. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, that was like a thing. That was legitimately when you heard about the RX-7, they're like, carpet's empty. Carpet's got uh, holes in it. <laughs> legitimately, look it up. I'm not making this up to be funny. I'm pretty impressed with that box of carpet and how light it is. So as for weight gain or uh, weight issues, it's nominal, it doesn't even matter at best, but we can take a good look at them when both of them are out before we put the new stuff back in. Let's take a look at the new stuff first. Uh, surprisingly enough, this did not come from overseas. I was expecting, oh, from China or some, some place that specializes in putting their workers through hell to make just a crappy piece of carpet. This one literally is made in the United States and I only noticed that not because of the box, but because the shipping was like North Carolina, was somewhere over on the East Coast. So again, you can see kind of, I mean, I know I'm extremely strong. I make this look like that, but it's really actually white stuff. <laughs> I did uh, have the choice over like 20 or 30 colors and I picked basic bitch black. I wonder if this thing's even molded to the car. I have a feeling we're gonna have like, wearing that sweater that your grandma got you. Sort of situation going on here. Okay, I feel like there's two passenger compartments. Okay, they are formed to something. Not sure if I'm sold on the style though. Like feel this, it's a little bit more shaggy than I was expecting. Just like grandma's sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> it is, there's so many aspects. First of all, like if, as you guys probably know, like if somebody says, hey, I'm selling my stock carpet, it's used and they're, they're selling it for ungodly like $100,000 million. No, it's like 900 bucks, it's ridiculous. Hopefully this is a reasonable replacement and uh, we found a new avenue for RX-7s that look pretty again. <laughs> that is out. All right, you are currently looking at the sections of what was in the car, and of course it looks way more professional. It's dirty, it's aged, it's rough, uh, but it is formed to the car. The, one of the major parts of that is the parts that are underneath it. Uh, not this part, but the actual thick rubber. I'm gonna try and separate the carpet from the rubber because I really want to use a lot of this sound deadening type of material. I tried retaining as much of that as possible. So we'll separate those two, but looking over at this, this is truly a blank canvas. Yes, there is an attempt to form this by the company. You can see right here, it fits the uh, lip or the red, uh, ridge, but that's about as far as it goes. And they did something, you know, on this end. See that's, that cinch there? That's actually by design. I bought a heat gun to deal with this situation exactly because I have a feeling that this is not going to fit 100%. I have a feeling that it's gonna be weird. And we bought adhesive, we, we even bought flex glue uh, to fill in the, the cracks <laughs> of whatever's gonna happen. So what, what we're gonna do right now is start form fitting this carpet. We separated the carpet from the rubberized padding underneath the carpet. They were glued together, but after whatever, 20 some years of glue sitting there, it was relatively easy to take off. Uh, you can tell what part kept the shape though. These are definitely formed. They're uh, pretty loose. We might use the new padding that comes with the new stuff underneath this, but we're gonna use this as a layer to sound deaden and make this car sound good. This thing's so weighty, like it weighs so much. I think that's actually gonna help us with avoiding all the rust and the fact that we're protecting the car from more rust and oiling it. This thing will hold it in place. Look at that though. That, that's good thing we definitely separated those two. Order. This really does give us a great place to work from. Okay, so again, I, I don't really see, especially with that floorboard, I don't really see a reason to use the padding from the other company. Plenty of padding, it's in the right spot. It's 
to the other side. This is a phase that's going to take the four rotor a lot of time. Is interior work, you know, custom fit interior. We're just putting an interior that existed. We didn't, we didn't invent this. And it's a pain in the ass. Surprisingly enough, these overlap. They must have overlapped on the other side at some point. Genuinely going together really well. Okay, so all these cables end up popping in underneath the carpet right like that. Okay, are we ready for the real carpet? I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. First thing, first. You're the realist? The, realist, <laughs> the uh, parking brake is gonna be a bitch to get around because we're gonna have to go over and then under. Even if we do this, we have to still cut the hole for it, but we, we can't cut the hole until we've got everything in the right spots. So we should take the parking brake off. Now the nuts off should just, right? Should just pop off. There we go. That makes life a lot easier. So at this point, the next challenge is gonna be getting the carpet over this. Yeah, this might be awkward, but if you were able to start on this side and like snake it over to me, like up and over, you'd be, we will get it here. Take a bit. But this side's fine. Back here is easy to get the fed. I'm almost, I'm almost perfectly lined up right here. This spot is actually, it needs to pivot off of this spot this way. Obviously remember that this ends up having to actually go in the corners. So it gives us an idea of how much slack we do or do not have. That it's weak. <laughs> These need to go over it. It's messy, but it works. Okay, that is basically the corners. There's so much more to go though. I think it's like kind of meant for it. Okay, after much debate, uh, we finally have found the hole or the spot that we're gonna cut our inaugural hole of the sicky shifter. I could remove the shifter, but whatever. We're gonna have to cut a bigger hole anyway. So, giving birth to my baby shifter. And that is step one. Now, of course, like I said, it can shift over left and right a lot because we still have to cut a hole for all of this. There's our first step. And now we can continue on massaging the rest of this. This is really surprisingly long going towards the front of the car. I am blown away by that because it is definitely unnecessary. All of this is unnecessary. This clearly looks like it's almost in the right spot. But look at that. Even if that was, there's tons of excess material being cramped up underneath the pedal. So this area, pretty solidly formed, I'll be honest. That, uh, that's how it came from them. Uh, up here, clusterfuck. They're like, oh, we're gonna take a Turbo 2 FC and mix the two together and save money. But look at this, look at this over here. <laughs> I believe in this stuff. Look, at, I can hold it up here and the magic's there, but as soon as you actually put it into the corner, weird stuff happens. Yeah, it's not going into the corner. Yeah, this looks like atrocious. This is atrocious. This looks like uh, Grandpa in his garage is trying to rebuild his 57 Chevy. Not the cool 57 Chevy, it's probably whatever other car was in the 57s. And uh, he bought some carpet from the Home Depot, or Lowe's, and I'm talking like the cheap carpet. You wanna go get our uh, seven strokes, our putters? Cause it feels like uh, putting grass. <laughs> it does. But that do doesn't that look like, that longs in the Chevy Trailblazer, old Trailblazer, like the 80s, if there was one. That the uh, quality of the carpet, I'm not impressed at all. That that looks pretty raggedy. All right, we went over to 7-Eleven to uh, discuss our problems, and we thought about it. Here's what we're gonna do: we're gonna cut it straight down the spine, and then work from. We're gonna make our own project work. We're gonna make this look better than the shit that this is, because this is not not good. No bueno. Uh, if you're the company that made this, this is probably the most budget thing I've ever seen put onto a car, and I'm pretty good at stretching a dollar. I wouldn't recommend this for anybody. We'll see how the end product works out, but so far not enjoying the uh, finish. It looks it looks like grandpa's old truck, like we were saying earlier. So we're gonna split it down the middle and then join it and overlap it and hopefully we can salvage it.
step one, um, we're definitely gonna take some creative liberty here. We're going to press it on this flat area along here in this area here. We're gonna ignore that there's a hole or a dent in that area. We're gonna use some basic tape, actual carpet tape, and we're just gonna press along this area because they do, we know for a fact that with or without the extra pieces, they've formed it to this bar. They really don't want you going to those corners. That is a big, very clear aspect of this. Like I said, I'm just simply gonna go up the side of the car and then just stop it to right here. Cause these are again known parts of the OE of the car. That's what they won't let you to do is keep it nice and simple. Weakest, useless tape ever. And I'm not blaming the tape completely. This backing is like wax. What is that? Like that's like candle wax. Here, let me do a sick test on the uh, Insight in it in the engine bay and it proved that this stuff is definitely like a wax on the back. It really it treats it exactly like that. So we're gonna use a heat gun to our advantage. Heat this section up here as a test. See how it's like formless? We're gonna form it, push it against here and see if it stays and see if we can actually manually get this car to form to what we want. And we really do have this thing on high heat, full everything. Because we want it to melt fast, not melt the top side, but move quickly. Keep in mind, we gotta keep this away from any, see like it created some more lumps. I'd love to be able to just zoot, zap it from the top side, really. This can be glued down and held for hours on end, sure, and kind of cheated. I can do that. But this, there's no escaping that it's not all touching the fucking car. You can actually see where they formed the car. They tried to form it on this edge of the metal, not this. Okay, that whole section got heat. It's still a, a cluster uh, that definitely got worse. So we're, we've run out of options. This is absolutely pitiful shit. There's creases in it from shipping or whatever. This is absolutely not possible to install this piece and have your friends think that you're not a complete piece of Your car will look like absolute It's claimed to have formed this car. They didn't form it with this in mind. They didn't form it with the seat in mind. They didn't form it with the center interior in mind. They didn't form it with any of this in mind. They didn't, they didn't even try to fit it around pedals. It has no form whatsoever to the pedals. The standard tunnel for the center, not formed at all. <sighs> this has been one of the worst experiences of my life, but let me summarize why this is an absolutely horrible product. And I'm sorry, I, I, I bought it, I'm allowed to bitch about it. And I wanna avoid anybody else from purchasing this. This is really that bad. I can deal with the fact that I don't know how to install carpet. I am not an upholstery guy, but this isn't sold to an upholstery company. It's sold to individuals as an inexpensive object capable of improving your car. It is not that at all. Let me say that if I got OEM carpet unformed or formed as poorly as this was, I would be okay with that saying, you know what? I'm gonna take the time and the effort to get the right tools to form this to my car. Great. But the quality of this product is so bad. It looks like it belongs on like your grandpa's boat from the 1940s. Like it is so horrible that it is not worth the effort. It is not worth the time to make it fit right. So if it's a cheap product, cool, put it in there and it looks great. It just wears poorly or it just looks bad. No, this looks like absolute shit. And with tons of hours, I can make it look like slightly less shit. I'm literally putting good money after bad. That is why I cannot recommend this product whatsoever. I literally now, and for those of you guys that are in the same boat as me, have to go back to an OEM solution. I do not see a better solution. I wish these guys would actually take the time to put a better quality product on their line, form it with more effort, even take into account that there are parts on this car that have to work with the OEM car. These seat holes should be cut out. Who is going to form it for an RX-7, for an FD, and not put the correct seats in? They're, they're the standard holes. If you're gonna sell a product, at least give me an option to give me a better version of it. An actual version, I would be willing to pay up to the OEM price. I, there is no option. It's that simple. So I can absolutely say with 100% certainty, this is a horrible product, and I do not recommend you jumping in and using this in any of your cars. in that assholes.